Good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And it's, a, it's another Monday morning and another start of a financial crisis, potentially, with China selling off almost 5% again uh, heading towards its close. And that comes hot on the heels of a rather impressive non-farm payrolls number on Friday, where we had 292,000 jobs versus 200,000 expected, which is one of the best non-farm payrolls that, uh, in, in recent months. Uh, and to smash expectations by such a, a, a high number should be uh, a cause for, uh, for cheer, not for negativity. But nevertheless, towards the end of the close on Friday, um, a lot of the global markets were kind of coming off. And then this morning, the, uh, the Chinese government raised the guidance for the yuan again, which uh, you would have thought would help stabilize the markets. They kind of did. You know, the Chinese markets dropped maybe about 2%. And then it's only when you get a little bit closer towards the end, there's more um, kind of commentary in social media and newspapers talking about the lack of confidence in the Chinese government to manage a financial crisis at this stage. You know, they make a decision and then they reverse it and then they do another decision and then the first sign of trouble, they reverse it again. So you'll see this as a common theme over the next couple of weeks as in what, what can they do that's gonna be effective to support the economy? Um, they're trying not to get involved in a currency war right now, uh, but there's a, there's, there's a lot of issues with the, um, with the uh, Chinese economy because there's so much now that could go wrong. It's ballooned to such a massive size. It's had a, an, an incredible um, couple of years, but where we are right now, actually, after all these sell-offs that we've had in the last couple of, last, well, the last two weeks, really, uh, the Chinese stock market now is currently at a four-year low. And uh, that means that basically a lot of uh, stock investors in, in China are not that happy with uh, the way things are going right now. And as we discussed there last week, the circuit breakers have now been removed. Um, but that doesn't seem to be kind of stemming the, uh, stemming the bleed, so to speak. So that's currently where we sit. Great news out of the UK, out of the US, sorry, with non-farm payrolls. Uh, but then China has really struggled uh, so far this morning. The real interesting piece from my perspective as well, because I'm quite big into uh, FX, is the lack of movement by the US dollar following that NFP. And the fact is many commentators still believe there's going to be three more interest rate hikes in the US in 2016. With all this turmoil that we're seeing right now in the markets, uh, that seems like a bit of a tall order right now. And the US dollar really is actually, if you look at cable, which we'll look at in a second, the euro dollar, we're actually seeing a little bit of a reversal in the USD. And a very common theme as well, people are selling the US dollar to buy the Japanese yen. It's the yen and gold that are the safe havens against, against uncertainty. Specifically, the Japanese yen has been quite popular. So that does give you a bit of an insight as to the themes currently evolving in the market. But let's go ahead and have a look at the technicals now. And as ever, we're gonna start off with the US 30. So right now, what we're actually seeing is 65% uh, of CMC market clients are short. So they're obviously expecting further downside. And you can actually probably just see on here uh, the negative moves that we've seen. This was after non-farm payrolls where the market initially spiked higher, only then to lose momentum completely and then drop negative. And we've actually been a lot lower this morning. We've had a little bit of a bounce, but make no mistake, that next potential support level is the only support level around, and that's at, uh, close to 16,000. That's about 300 points less than where we are right now. Um, RSI is oversold, but there's not yet any signal to, to buy. It's just gone through that 30% um, that level, but it's, it's still showing there could be further downside to come. So that's where we are with the US 30. Um, with the bottom of this area right here, this could be seen as a short-term potential support, but we have a whole day's worth of, uh, of trading before that low is confirmed uh, to look forward to. Then having a look at the UK 100, very different, uh, very different picture uh, in regards to um, the view of CMT Marcus clients. 86% of, of our clients are currently long. What I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna remove that other, that other technical analysis and what we're going to do is just have a, have a little bit more of a look at this in more detail. And what you can really get here is a, an idea of a potential support, the fact that we broke that already. And you then can really look at the tips of these candles right here for those next levels. Now, if I go ahead and get my uh, other technical studies on there, like my MACD, my RSI, and also my slow stochastic, which is some of the favorite ones that we like to use here at CMC. You can get a bit of a flavor that the RSI is not yet going into that oversold area. It's very, very close to it at the moment. Very ugly candle that we had there uh, on, on Friday. We were much higher on that UK market, pushed all the way back down into negative. We gapped lower this morning 
and then um, we pushed on higher. Now we're a little bit up the session lows, but you can get a bit of a flavor of where we are. In fact, I'm just gonna remove that, and you're probably looking at the tip of this candle here. So one, two, three, four, five, and that's where we are. So we actually gap lower and then pushed higher. So as long as we stay above 58.95, the UK 100 is not that bad. This is a really ugly candle to have here though. But if we start to trade lower later on today, to trade below 58.93, that would be seen as from a technical analysis perspective as quite negative. And uh, then you'd be looking at 57.69 as a next potential support level. Moving on to Japan 225 next. Uh, and a very kind of similar picture uh, where, let me just go ahead and push this out. You've had a gap lower. Uh, and let me just uh, go ahead and get my support levels drawn on here again. So if we get the drawing tool, normally I would take the tip from here. Uh, and you can see you've got one bounce, two, three, didn't have a close below that, and pretty much bang on the fourth one there again. And adding on the MACD and the RSI and the slow stochastic, you'll see that we have had an extended move to the downside. Uh, we are in oversold territory, but what you're not really getting right now is that reversal signal. It's not breaking back up through right there. But 17,173, uh, 17,172, sorry, is a potential support, and we are a little bit above that just now. Off the session high, so it is getting pushed that little bit lower, and CMC clients have a 51% long position. Moving on to, uh, on to dollar yen now. And again, having a quick look at this, a similar kind of pattern where we have had, we do have currently have a hammer formation on this FX pair. So moving out, you can see an idea of where the potential support levels are. So get my drawing tool out here, uh, and you would move, you'd move along here. Uh, initially, you might have seen a level running about here, and then you have to go along to a, a further side to here, and then potentially, I'm gonna say, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna take this level right here. Uh, as, as, as a next potential support around about 116.80. And again, getting the MACD and the RSI and the slow stochastic out, we can get a bit of a flavor as to the other technical uh, areas. Oversold, not a massive surprise when you have a look at the chart, uh, but you can get a bit of a flavor of, the, of those moves and the fact that it's bounced off there already this morning and pushed into positive territory. Gap lower, obviously, over the weekend. So that's 116 spot 80 is a potential support. The next potential resistance is 118 spot uh, 33. And unfortunately, we're a little bit away from there right now, but that does give you a bit of a flavor. 56% of CMC Marcus clients are currently long on uh, the US dollar Japanese yen. So then moving on to West Texas crude, and uh, West Texas crude is a, is a bit of a tough one. Matter of fact, if I just uh, add that onto here, that should give you a bit of an idea of that, of that technical picture. Uh, get my drawing tools out, and uh, you draw your support level, one of your support levels here. Uh, and then we have to go all the way back onto my monthly chart just to get any, flavor, any other flavor of those other potential support levels. Obviously, we're a good bit away from there at the moment. And then move, I'm gonna move this all the way down to maybe about $26 and change. Let's do 25.71 at the moment. Uh, is there any other potential support levels that we can look at? Uh, it's, it's pretty dire to be honest. 26, that's, that's the correct one. So 26.73 is the next potential support. I'm gonna go back onto my daily chart there for a second and uh, you can just see how far away we are from that. And uh, we are gonna have potential short-term support at the tip of this candle. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly draw that one on there. And uh, if we do get a move to the upside now, arguably you could be looking at the tips of these candles here. Uh, so we're in about 33.69 as uh, potential short-term potential resistance and uh, just a little bit below uh, where we are right now, a little bit, maybe 31.70, 31.50. Um, that's where the bottom of this candle is. That could be your next short-term potential support. So that does give you an idea of where West Texas crude is. 92% of our clients are currently uh, long on this product. So then moving on to gold, and then finishing up with the FX pairs. So moving on to gold, uh, you, you do get a bit of an idea that we have been moving up higher. Again, getting my uh, support levels out, uh, we were able to, uh, to break through uh, some significant uh, potential uh, support slash resistance, around about $1,100, $1,100, sorry. Uh, and you can just see the volatility that we've had all the way around here. So we were much lower there on the Friday, uh, pushed back up, uh, still negative for the day, but at least we managed to get our head back above 101 uh, or $1,101. Uh, 
the tip of this candle and the tip of this candle is indicative of each time it tries to push up that little bit higher, you are getting uh, kind of selling pressure, pushing it back down. $1,100 on gold is a psychological level as well. A lot of people are gonna be talking about it and it has the safe haven appeal. Also, if you're looking at interest rates not, ra not getting raised quite as frequently as some traders would think, gold has some potential. Um, but the fact is, it's not really doing a huge amount so far this morning. 54% of our clients are currently short. It's almost 50-50. Uh, there's still a lot of things that, uh, that need to happen before uh, clients get more, more confident about this, but certainly from a safe haven aspect, it still has some appeal. And then finishing up with uh, Euro dollar and GBP USD. And Euro dollar uh, has been in this kind of downwards trend for, for, for a little while, but on, uh, on Thursday and Friday, you can see the tip of this candle here getting pushed right back up. Very, very volatile session there on Friday where it sold right off uh, as, as the dollar started to gain momentum and it almost gave up all of those gains uh, before the end of the session. So if we look at this from a technical analysis perspective, where are the core levels? Well, if we go right here, uh, you're still potentially looking at around about 1.08 as a significant level. Uh, I'm gonna do my uh, sloping trend line here. So I'm sure that's gonna come into play at some point in the future. And arguably, I think you could take a point from here and apply it across here, potentially. Uh, and then you are looking right here and probably, uh, we're a good bit away from there right now, actually. Uh, I'll leave it for there at the moment. And this is currently where we kind of set where you might have a sloping uh, resistance there to look forward to. The tips of these candles, you've got a high, lower high, lower high. We're not breaking up necessarily that higher. And already for, uh, for your dollar, you are uh, towards the bottom end of that range with the rejection of that move. Uh, to the upside, you can just see by the long the candle right there where we are. 66% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. And then finishing up with GBP USD, um, we are looking at 86% of our clients are currently short on this. And uh, you can see quite clearly when you get your SR line and you just add it right here that we were on the wrong side of that level just now. Uh, let's go a little bit further back to see what that next potential support level is. Right, so you are going to be adding this level on down here. 142.30 is the next level. And then the tips of these candles down here, that would be the one after. Uh, and you, you can just get an idea. Poor Cable hasn't had a great run. Uh, it's been in a downwards trend for quite some time. Um, we are on the wrong side of one spot 45 and change right now. Uh, closing down, that's on the weekly chart. So let's go back onto the daily. Uh, and you can just see it's just broken below there. And already the tips of this candle here, try to push up that little bit higher only to fail. So we've got a doji formation at the moment. 86% of CMC Marks clients uh, by monetary value are currently short on this index. In regards to the market calendar, guys, there's absolutely pretty much nothing of excitement to look forward to uh, today. Let's fast forward on Tuesday. You've got uh, industrial production in the UK. Wednesday gives you more Chinese data. That trade balance data is going to be very important, guys, so make sure uh, you don't uh, forget about that one if you've got your open positions. And then you've got your petroleum report and some, Chinese, uh, some Japanese data as well. And Thursday gives you interest rate announcements from the Bank of England and uh, employment claims from the US. And let's just finish up Friday just for fun. US retail sales, uh, industrial production, and the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index as well. Well, guys, that is it for today. A kind of interesting start to the week. Very good luck with your trading. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.